Well, hi everyone. It's been about 10 months since I did my last video about the Teton Pass failure and repair efforts in Wyoming. And a number of you reached out to me asking for an update on the situation. So that's the purpose of today's video. I'm recording this on July 29th, 2025. It's been about 13 months since the failure occurred in early June of 2024 that led to a quite lengthy and expensive repair and included a temporary repair as well. I've done a number of videos about this, so this is the wrap up video about how it all turned out. So on June 30th, 2025, YDOT completed their work on the permanent repair and opened the road to traffic. As a reminder, on June 6th, 2024, this failure occurred over a 100 foot long reach of the highway embankment on Highway 22 west of Jackson, Wyoming, and the slide extended to a depth of around 65 feet. And in the immediate aftermath, it created quite a hardship for mostly people that live in Idaho and commute to Jackson for work. So this is the location. Failure occurred on the outside of this hairpin curve. Now their permanent fix consisted of micropile at the base of the slope. First of all, they had to excavate the remaining embankment material that was in that section. They stabilized the base with micropile, brought in a layer of drain rock, and then used alternating layers of compacted soil fill and lightweight blown glass fill to complete the embankment. Prior to coming up with that fill as well, they installed a series of soil anchors on the embankment face that would underlie all the new fill placed. And this is drone footage from last fall, early last fall, I think uh, September 2024, showing the work here. They've got a wire mesh with soil anchors stabilizing the slope. They did that construction in a top-down fashion, so they weren't quite at the full depth of their excavation at this point. And this is footage from a Wyoming DOT YouTube video. There's a link in the description. Just a closer shot of this mesh and soil anchor system. Now we have a view of the micropile that were installed at the base of the foundation to provide more stability for the embankment foundation. And we see a conveyor bringing in the fill material. And as I mentioned, it's compacted in lifts two foot thickness of each layer. So the blown glass aggregate and the natural soil backfill. This is really lightweight material, has a density of 20 pounds per cubic foot versus typical compacted soil densities of around 140 to 150 pounds per cubic foot. So here's a photo from November 28th, 2024. See they're coming up with the fill. They've completed their excavation to full depth. They've already installed the micropile. Now they're coming up with these layers of fill. So looks like a very good workmanlike job done by the prime contractor Ames. Now this is April 23rd, 2025. You can see they're nearing the top of the fill placement, not quite there yet. They also used layers of geogrid in between each compacted fill layer, provide extra internal strength against shearing for this new embankment. That's what it looks like in the completed roadway. So this article that was published towards the end of June in the Wyoming file, Wyo file website, lists that the emergency repairs, which consisted of a hastily constructed bypass that was supposed to be temporary, but lasted for over a year until they could complete the full restoration of the original embankment section. That cost $900,000. That was done with uh, forces from Evans Construction. And then the construction that was done by Ames for the permanent repair cost a whopping $43 million. So overall, the permanent repair was successful. Apparently, uh, they said that the new embankment would have a design life of 75 years, and they never explained what the basis of that was. I suspect that's related to rates of corrosion for the micropile, foundation stabilization, or possibly the soil anchors. 
they didn't really specify that. It just struck me as odd. Normally you see design lives like that associated with, with bridges or dams, not an embankment slope itself. Now, if you watched any of my previous videos that I did last year in the aftermath of this failure, you know I was critical about several aspects of how Wyoming DOT conducted themselves either right up to the failure and then in the immediate aftermath. And my opinions haven't changed in that regard. I'm not gonna rehash what was in those previous videos, but it's important to note what they are because you have Bob Hammond, who's the resident engineer for YDOT in the Jackson district. And he's been quoted as stating publicly that he would do absolutely nothing differently in retrospect, which I find hard to accept, honestly. I mean, they didn't learn anything about that experience. One of the things I was critical about early on was there were clear signs of imminent large-scale embankment failure. You can see this, these cracks through the roadway section that are forming an arc. That's a classic indicator of a deep-seated slide about ready to cut loose. And instead of recognizing that, they decided to have the contractor peel off the few inches of asphalt paving as if that was somehow going to make a difference. And then hours later, fortunately everyone had gone home by that point, this massive failure occurred. Then they come in immediately before they had completed their geotechnical investigation without any design work. I've got the emails from Bob Hammond saying that there was no design work involved with this bypass. And I thought it was premature to start placing new fill, uh, which they end up doing in a three week period, and reopening that section to traffic before anybody could fully understand what had caused the failure and what the risks were going forward. So the fact that they got lucky and it worked out doesn't change my view of the situation. I also thought that their computed global factors of safety for that temporary section were far too low and not in accordance with Federal Highway Administration guidance, in my opinion. So that's it. I'm gonna put a bow on this topic, unless there's another failure at, at this location, which I don't expect, or certainly there's other high-risk areas of Wyoming highway embankment throughout the state. So I hope the state has learned how to better monitor and react to the potential of large-scale highway embankment slides going forward. With that, I wanna thank those of you who have contributed to buy me a coffee. That's a great way to support this channel. I've spent hundreds of dollars on public records requests for past videos uh, on this topic, and those contributions really help defray those costs. Certainly want to thank the channel members, as well as those of you who provided super thanks, additional great ways to support the channel. So please stay tuned. I've got other interesting topics coming up on this channel.